what's happening guys? Yo, it is so loud in here. <laughs> I have to turn this down. Uh, what is happening guys? Coming back at you with a lesson. So I haven't done a lesson in a little while and I was like, you know what? Let's talk about the Eric Johnson trap that I fell into many years ago. Don't worry. I think I figured out how to get out of it a little bit. But it's, you know what? It's not a bad trap to be in if I'm being honest. You know, it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. So if you want tabs for today's lesson, yo, that is all linked down below in the description. Snag those if you want to. We're going to dive onto this one. Less talk and more rocking. And uh, let's just go. Let's get it. All right. So here's the Eric Johnson track. That lick. Now, why it's a trap is what happens is... We all learn this lick. It sounds incredible. What's an Eric Johnson lick? But does he ever play anything that doesn't sound incredible? And we never, you know, venture past that because it's like it already sounds so good. We just kind of leave it alone. And what happens is it just sounds like a, a blatant Eric Johnson ripoff, which is, there's, again, there's nothing wrong with that. Who doesn't want to sound like Eric Johnson? And what I found is like, you know, I would do this lick and, and I got to where, um, I was comfortable doing it in a lot of different places, but I kind of just always did the same thing. And when I started venturing out of it, and this is something I'm always talking about, I talk about learning the concept of the lick, not just the lick itself, and kind of like regurgitating the exact same thing that the person that you learned it from did. So what I started doing was I started taking this idea, the concept, and putting it in different scales. So I'm gonna show you that overall starting point one that I just played, and then I'm gonna break it into three different versions that I came up with and um, see if you kind of dig the idea that they still sound like Eric Johnson, but they have a slightly different vibe to them. So let's get it. So this one, real nice and slow, would look like this. Now we're going to talk about your picking here in just a second. Let me show you the notes, and then I'll show you the picking. So basically, it's, what, it's a very standard Eric Johnson thing. It's descending fives. Okay, so he's going 15 to 12 on the high E string, 15 to 12 on the B, and then 14 on the G. Now there's your first set of five notes. Okay, sorry, my pots are old, old and cranky in this guitar. Okay, so there's your first set of five. Now he repeats another set of five, but he just goes back one string, so he goes back to the B string. You're going to go 15, 12, 14, 12, 14 on the D. Okay, see? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, so far we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the picking is very crucial. Like I said, I'm going to spotlight that here in just a second. Now we're going to go another set of 5, starting on the G. 14, 12, 14, 12 on the D. And then 14 on the A. Okay, so... One more set here. He starts on the D string, 14, 12, 14, 12 on the A, 15 on that lowest of all the E's, and then 12. Okay, so guitar's a little bit out of tune, close enough for rock and roll, right? Okay, so all together. Now the picking. The picking is really the key to getting this rolling sound. Now you can probably do it alternate picking. I've seen guys like uh, Ben Eller and Andy Wood and stuff alternate pick this stuff and it sounds exactly like it. But um, for me, the secret is getting this rolling style that Eric does. So basically the picking is like this. It goes down, up, down, up, down, and it never varies from that. It's always down, up, down, up, down. So what, what I mean by that is when the next one starts, you're going to start with a down. So you always have these two downs in a row. It's basically like a little like mini sweep. Uh, and you, I kind of treat it as like I'm flowing through the string. So... See? Down, up, down, up, down, down. Right there. There's little mini sweeps. So the fifth... And the first note are always downs. And even if they're next to each other, always a down. So that's when you have those two downs. So I'll, I'll call out the picking all the way through at one time. So down, up, down, up, down. 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 We end there with an up. Do whatever Eric Johnson 
something you want in there. So there's the first example. Now let's tweak that. That's the one that everyone falls into. That That's the trap. Because, like I said, it just sounds so great. We do it, you know, all over the place. And it's like, it always sounds good, but it always sounds like Eric. So let's tweak it a little bit with this next example. So this next one here, now this is an idea that it still sounds like Eric Johns, and he actually does a similar thing to this, but we're still expanding a little bit from that kind of that bass work idea that we had. Now, um, the idea of including the major third into your minor pentatonic scale is something I got from Warren D. Martini. Um, I, I didn't necessarily get this from Eric, and I didn't get this lick from Warren, uh, but basically I'm just replacing all of my minor thirds it, throughout the scale with major thirds. So I don't go that when I go down here, because I cheat. Um, so basically it's the same lick, same principles, but now we have a different sound. Listen, here's the first one. Here's the new one. See, there's a little tweak there. It has this Mixolydian vibe to it now. So um, we're going to be going like this. Uh, like I said, if you know where your minor thirds are, just turn them into major thirds. But basically, I'm going to go 16 to 12 on the high E string. Now, the picking stays the same. Like I said, the concept of the lick, the way we're rolling through the scale, identical to the first one. We're simply working on changing our left hand to make it feel different, while our right hand gets to cruise on by and do the same stuff each time. So we're going to go 16 to 12, then 15 to 12 on the B, 14 on the G. Okay, there's our first set of five. Remember, down, up, down, up, down, down. Okay? Now let's start over again. 15 to 12 on the B. Here it gets funky. 14 to 13 on the G. Okay? And then 14 on the D. So one, two, three, four, five. So work on just getting those two to flow together um, if it's giving you trouble. Because like I said, it, it'll feel a little bit weird because it's different fingering for us. Okay? One thing I forgot to talk about in the first one is how I'm rolling my fingers as well. I, I did forget to mention that. So when, if you watch when I do this, every time there's like, there's stacked 14s, so there's 14 on one string and 14 on the other string, I roll my finger. I don't switch fingers, I roll it. So sorry I forgot to mention that in the beginning. Okay? Now we're going to go to the G, and you're going to go 14, 13. So listen how many times we hit that major third within the context of this lick. 14, 12, and 14 on the A. Okay? There's our next set of five. Okay? Now we're going to go to 14, 12 on the D. 14, 12 on the uh, A string. Now I deviate here a little bit because reaching to get that 16 always felt kind of weird. So instead of getting my major third here, I get it down here. So I go. Okay. And then 12 on the low E string. Now you could go and play 16 on the low E string. I slide my finger down. Same notes. It's just one made more sense to me. Okay, and that's basically what it looks like. Now watch my picking hand once. Lick number two. Here we are making it sound a little bit more dark. Now I notice how we went from very pentatonic, more major, now we're going more dark. I'm, I'm kind of doing this as like a, like a Phrygian kind of vibe almost. So that's just where my mind is, is looking at a lot of this stuff. Um, I'm sure a, a theory aficionado can be like, hey, that's not Phrygian, that's this. But this is just how my brain works. So um, what I'm doing is I'm actually adding a little bit of a reach here to give this one a little bit of a wider interval between the notes. Now this is another really good thing. And the next lick, I'm gonna show you one that's kind of more like my own take on the Eric Johnson thing. Um, but basically I'm going like this. I'm gonna go all the way up here to 17 and going to 12 on the high E string. <laughs> As I hit the wrong string. And then 13 to 12. Okay. And then 14 on the G. 
Okay, so this one already is starting out funky, right? It's different. Big stretch, little stretch, and then we're back to normal pentatonic. Okay. I guess it's almost more like Aeolian maybe than Phrygian, but this is just where my mind goes because I have that flat two in there. So, okay. Now we're going to keep going. We're going to go 13 to 12 on the B, 14 to 12 on the G, 14 on the D. Okay, so now we've, we've kind of ventured back into good old, our safety zone, our pentatonic world, but we started out different. Okay. Now I'm going to go down here, I'm going to go 14 to 12 on the G, 14 to 12 on the D, 14 on the A. Now here we're getting ready to make it funky again. Rolling down, 14, 12, 14, 12, 13 on the low E string. That's why I think it sounds more Phrygian. And then 12. Okay, so... Sorry, <laughs> as I totally butcher it. Okay, and that's your new one. Like I said, again, I've taken that idea, and to me, this one sounds the most different of the, of the three already, you know? There's a little part where it sounds a little bit samey, but then it kind of it branches back out, and I'm like, yo, all right, it's a new lick. All right, so the final one here is a little bit of my own personal adaptation to it. Like the other one where I was just kind of like strictly sticking to all the same stuff. This one's a little bit different at the beginning, but um, it's basically how I like to use the lick. Now it still sounds very Eric Johnson-y, but um, it's a little bit wider sounding. And, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. Well, you probably see already because I played the lick. But the notes are just a little bit further apart from each other. And I like this little like, little like jump start uh, kind of at the beginning. That, you know, I don't know why I like that sound a lot. Um, but basically, I'm just going straight pentatonic through this one. It's all, all pentatonic, the ultimate, ultimate pentatonic scale. But I'm combining box two and one together. So I'm going to go 17 to 12 on the high E string. Then I go to 15. Now this one, like I said, deviates. Our right hand has to adapt. So we have to go. So, okay. And then I kick it off again. I go 17, 12. Now I go 15, 12, and 14. So like I so said, there's this little, like, intro to the pattern that we already know how to do so okay now we're now we're back in business so watch i went down up down down up okay 15 12 14 so. now when i get to that 14 i roll back down 15 12 okay I go 14, 12, 14, okay? Now here's where I change it a little bit. I add a little bit of a variant to it. So I'm, I go to 16 on the G instead of going back to 14. This is where I said that to me the, the lick sounds a little bit wider. It has a bigger intervals in it. So, okay? 16, 14, 14. So, I went 16 to 12, 14, 12, 14 on the A, get 16 again on the D, then 12, okay? Slot my way through it. Alrighty, y'all. That is going to be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed that lesson. Like I said, tabs are linked down below. You can check them out if you want to. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else. I'll play you guys some rhythm. You can try some of those licks out with this rhythm I'm gonna gonna throw down for you. Probably the last one will work the best. But um, other than that, guys, just have a good day. So I'll see you all later. Woo!